Behind the heavy doors and the high walls of any embassy, there's a hive of people working to further bilateral relations, solve issues, and foster cross-cultural improvements. But I'm always struck by how few foreign citizens ever really get the chance to understand the life of a busy embassy, which is why I'm delighted to be joined today by Her Majesty's Ambassador to the Republic of Poland, Mr. Jonathan Knott. Hello, Jonathan. Hi, afternoon. Jonathan, I must warn you, uh, because most people watching this won't know, but actually, once upon a time in a land far, far away, you were my boss. And because you were a very nice boss, uh, and extremely fair and very effective, I'm going to have to grill you twice as hard today in order to be considered impartial. Are That's only fair. That's <laughs> only fair. <laughs> they were happy days, but they were a, a little while ago. Uh -huh. uh, I wonder, do you agree with me, therefore, that you think that most people don't understand what really goes on in, in an embassy? I don't think it's some, something that comes across in people's ordinary, everyday lives. I mean, I suppose most people, when they come across an embassy, is when they've got some sort of a problem. Mostly when they're uh, in a, another country which is not their own, um, whether it's, I don't know, any sort of crisis or whatever it might be, uh, domestic, medical, law and order thing. And so we come in as the next emergency service. But yes. there's a lot more to an embassy than only our uh, consular work, although that is really important. What's the, what, does, is that also uh, applying, therefore, to the role of an ambassador? Because you're sitting at the head of the, the triangle, the top of the tree. Uh, do you think people understand what ambassadors do? What, what does being an ambassador mean to you? I guess my task was put to me really succinctly, and I'll name drop a little bit, but excuse me for doing this. <laughs> but um, I met um, Mr Cameron when he was Prime Minister before I came out. I met Mrs May within a couple of weeks of her becoming Prime Minister. And both of them, in slightly different words, said to me, the British relationship with Poland is really good, but it needs to be great. And that's your job, Jonathan. Away you go. That was my tasking, if you like, and it was a fantastic task to have and to try and achieve over my, my time here. Um, so that, if you like, in a nutshell, um, is what my job is and what this, me, this ambassador, um, what I wake up and think, OK, how can I make this relationship greater? Uh, out of interest, how much do those prime ministers then rely on their embassies? Are there, is there lots of communication about sort of daily matters? And, uh, you know, are, are you sending back reports on everything that goes on? How, how does it look, as much as obviously you can say? No, no. Um, I mean, essentially, what we do here in the embassy um, is to achieve what we, we need to do with the relationship for the benefit of the UK, which is our job, but also for Poland too. But of course we need to understand what's going on in Poland to be able to do that. So we need to be able to analyse the situation um, and we use that analysis, perhaps not every day because that was your question, but regularly um, to tell the government back home what the opportunities are here, uh, the things to watch out for, um, and how we think that we can build the relationship. So, I mean, the quick answer to your question is, yes, we uh, try and help our colleagues in London understand what's happening here. Uh, we try and get them to help us, but also we help them to build this relationship. Um, and we make sure they know, if you like, the most important things that we think they need to mm. know about what's going on in Poland. So let's, let's break it down then. What does a, a typical wonderful day in the life of, uh, uh, of an ambassador look like? Um, I, I, other ambassadors I don't know. Let me, let me tell you about um, the sorts of things that happen in, in, in my days. But I, I'd, I'd say again, one of the reasons actually I really love this job is because no two days are the same. And there's such a variety of things that, um, that I get to do. Um, but essentially, for example, on a, on a Monday morning, I pulled together the leadership team of the embassy. So it's not just me that we have a team. I have a team um, who leads uh, the embassy, the head of each of our sections in the embassy. And we talk about what's happening. Um, we talk about what it means uh, for us as an embassy, for us as a country, for us, for our project of bringing Poland and the UK closer together. Um, we talk about the analysis we need to do. We talk about the reporting that we need to do. Um, and if you like, that's the kind of current affairs bit. We take a step back and we look at the bigger strategi uh, strategic challenges which we've got, the things we want to achieve over the course of a year. How have we done so far? What do we need to do next mm -hmm. over the next period as well? So there's a, there's a lot of planning which is involved typically early in the week. Um, 
Then after that, of course, is the execution of those plans. So how are we going to do all this stuff then? Um, and there I have a role. Um, uh, part of that often is to go and talk to people, meet people, try and convince people that what I think, what the British government thinks is the right way to go. Um, to try and explain how, in this case, Poland and the UK can work better together. That might mean going to talk to the government. It might mean talk, going to talk to other politicians, non-government people, opposition people. It might be going to talk to members of civil society, business people, military people. Um, it might be uh, people who work in education. The whole range of contacts between our two countries to try and take this relationship to the next level. Oh, listening to Jonathan again just reminds me about how much I enjoyed working with him. Uh, what a fascinating answer. I wonder, um, you've been here now for three years. You've got right. one year left on your... The, so the clock is kind of ticking. Are you in your uh, almost holiday mode because you, you've gone through the hard bit or is there still a, a big task to do before you go? There's, 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 there's quite a lot still to do, Paddy. I mean, um, I'm really pleased um, about how the relationship has developed over the last three years. Our governments talk together once a year now, um, the Prime Minister and six leading cabinet members. Um, our business communi uh, communities meet at least once a year. Um, our civil societies meet, meet in the Belvedere Forum once a year, and there are other projects going on. Our research and further education people meet. We've got British troops in Poland posted as part of the NATO force defending against uh, destabilisation. So a lot of that is hap uh, has, 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 has happened, but, you know, it's, 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 it's part of, I guess, the challenge is to make things even better. Um, so that project hasn't finished. Um, I guess you'll never, the relationship is never great enough, is the yes. first thing, I'd say. The great so that, knows no limits. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe easy is easy, easy, easy over. So you can't be satisfied. But the, the second thing, obviously, um, is the changing dynamic. Because as we move through the process of Brexit, this relationship changes. We need to talk to the Polish government about finding the right solution on Brexit so that the UK and the EU as a whole have a good, constructive and close relationship even after the UK leaves. Um, but we also need to talk about the relationship between the UK and Poland after we leave as well to make sure we don't lose anything of the richness and quality of that relationship. And that's a whole new dimension. Um, and although that, it feels like that's been going on for, for a little while now, it yes. will continue for years to come. Yes. And I think that's the, the, a, a continuing and super important uh, part of what we have to do. What did you know about Poland before you came here? Did you go through some sort of crash course, you know, Polish history, 400 years of Polish history in four days? Um, uh, yes and no. I don't know so much about the crash. Um, before I came here, I was, I was working in Budapest. I was the ambassador in Hungary. So I knew the region quite well. I worked with our regional, our Central European region commercial project, trying to increase the contact between Central Europe and the UK in business terms. Um, and because of that, I knew Poland and I knew Warsaw a little bit. I used to come on up to Warsaw maybe every couple of months for a few days, maybe a week. Um, but fortunately, between that job and this one, I had about eight months to prepare. So um, I got going with some Polish language, and that's an ongoing struggle, which the Polish language keeps on winning, but I'm still fighting. Um, but also in that period, I wanted to make sure that I knew as much about the background to the work that I'm doing. So yeah, that's you joked a little bit, but yes, that is knowing a little bit about history and golden bulls and the, uh, I don't know, Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth mm. and understanding those references, knowing about partition, knowing about um, uh, independence or re-independence um, from, from, from partitioning, understanding much more about the culture of Poland, whether that's high culture, whether that's more social culture. Um, knowing a little bit about sport as well, which is something which I enjoy anyway, but really getting a really good feel for what's going on so that I could really understand the environment that I'm in. And, but and I have to say that eight months was nowhere near enough, and I'm three years later, yes. every day um, there's something I learn, every, every day. And the guys upstairs, because most of our staff here are Polish, 
are super helpful when it comes to that, explaining why something's happened or, hang on, Jonathan, here's something else you need to know about that. Con context being king. I wonder, you've been here now for three years, you've had so many conversations, so many moments. What, what sort of bit of Poland has seeped into you that you might take with you to your next posting? That's, that's, that's quite a difficult question. I, I suspect that a lot is the answer. Putting a finger on exactly what it is, um, I'm not sure. I can, I can, if I ask a slightly different question, the thing which has made the biggest impression on me from my time in Poland, uh, and maybe this it sounds a little bit trite, but it's absolutely honest and from the heart, is the openness of Polish people. Now, when you're an ambassador and you show up somewhere, everybody's nice to you. Um, now, that maybe is not a big surprise, but it's true. Um, but when I walk around Warsaw, when I visit the rest of uh, the country, and I've been everywhere in Poland over these three years, it's been a real treat. I'm afraid Szczecin has taken me a little longer than it should have done, but I'm there, I'm there in two weeks' time. But I've been everywhere uh, else at least once, um, either on my own or with my family, and we've taken holidays all over Poland as well. Um, what has made a huge impression is how kind and patient everybody, or everybody, most people are. There are exceptions, obviously, um, but that has been the really, really big impression that I've taken away um, here. Um, and I don't know whether that's something special about a Polish-British connection, um, but that's a really sincere impression that I take away, and a really, really positive one. Hmm. That made me feel very warm inside my heart, Jonathan, thank you. Uh, you mentioned, of course, the uh, British-Polish connection. There are probably more than a million Poles mm -hmm. in the UK. Do we know how many British people are in Poland? It can't just be you and me. Uh, we reckon, and I'm afraid this is another estimate, just as the million is, we reckon there's probably between five and 10,000 British people resident in Poland. Um, nowhere near uh, a million, but a reasonable number, a good number. And, and what are they? Are they, are they all young go-getters like you and me, or are they, are, they, are they retired people, and do we know much about them? Um, well, we in the embassy know about people when they come in um, and engage. Now, we had a lot of engagement with people around Brexit because people wanted to be reassured about what's going on yes. and what the different scenarios are, and so we try to reach out to the community when we've got information. One of the challenges there has been, of course, people want more information than we've got but my promise to them has been, we will tell you as much as we can, as early as we can, um, please keep in touch. Um, those people who have come in have been a very large range. People who are retired, people who are just starting a career, um, people who are uh, married or in relationships with Polish people, people who are single. It's, it's quite a diverse group. A lot of business people, uh, clearly, a lot of people who um, have come to take advantage of new tech opportunities here. So I came across a couple of guys who are in the uh, games industry um, and who were over here um, working in, in a collaboration with a, with a Polish firm. So quite a big variety of people. The UK is obviously very important to Poland because there's many people. It's also a big export destination. Is Poland important to the UK? Where does it rank in the in the great game of, uh, of the United Kingdom's diplomacy? Gosh, I, don't, I, I think I'd hesitate to rank um, countries because that's always very subjective but I think I'd go back to what I said towards the beginning which is that which is that the, the orders uh, the task now was given by two prime ministers which essentially is when it comes to Poland good is not good enough and I'm not sure there are very many countries where that would apply I won't put together a league table but um, Poland is a really close partner for the UK and I don't think this is a political thing either because talking with different parties in Poland mm. I don't talk very much with the political parties in the UK because I've got to stay out of UK politics um, but I think that the interests of the UK and Poland are so close um, and our uh, point of view when it comes to international issues tends to be close not always and there are important issues where we disagree um, that that puts this among the most important relationships that the UK has Jonathan, I'm going to give you a couple of one-word uh, question or one-answer questions here. Uh, what one place would you recommend British people or foreign people visit in Poland? Uh, uh, Wrocław. Interesting. Fourth or fifth biggest city in Poland, still quite uh, not not quite on the map. That's interesting. That's why I would mention it. I mean, there are other uh, 
um, more established. You said one word, so I was trying to keep the one word. <laughs> I'll give you and why is the, um, as the... But people know about you know, beautiful Krakow and British people visit wonderful, wonderful Gdańsk. Um, but there are places around the rest of the country that they just don't know because they don't know Poland well enough. I hope that's going to change and that's going to develop. But places like Wrocław, my choice, uh, Lublin, where I was the other day, going to the Mazuri, uh, going to um, Białowieża to see the forest, um, going down to the mountains, maybe it's Krynica, maybe wherever it might be. There are so many places that British people don't know about. But uh, picking one, if you like, from that great big list, let me go with Wrocław. T tough choice. Not I'm least for the gnomes. <laughs> the gnomes are fantastic. And finally, uh, if you had to sum up this, this three years and this sum of experience and the people you've met, and just try and think of Poland in, in one word, what would that word be and why? I think I'd go back to a previous answer, which is friendly. And you've explained why. So that brings us neatly to the close of Hearts of Poland. Jonathan, thank you very much. Uh, I think we've given our viewers a very useful and intriguing glimpse into your life. There's, there's several hours of the day to go, so who knows what may befell you uh, on the way. But thank you very much for joining us on this search for Hearts of Poland. A pleasure. Please do make sure that you share this episode with anyone that watches it and watch more of our fascinating conversations with fascinating people leading fascinating lives on the First News Channel. Share this episode wherever you find it and I'll see you again for the next episode of Hearts of Poland. Mm -hmm.